everyone, welcome to the um, very last um, video from this um, Hannah Carlson page. Um, I've had a lot of fun with this page, especially all the glitter and sparkles. I hope um, you've been uh, having enjoying it as well. And we have these three to do, so we're going to come in a little closer. Now I'm going to do each of the three the same, so this sort of match, I think that will um, would make sense. They do look really similar. So that's my plan. Just trying to get the book straight. And I thought I would do them um, sort of orangey, just because we haven't done any orange on this page, so it'll sort of balance it out a little bit. I'm going to start with my darkest orange, which will be the dark cadmium orange. Now we've got, um, we've got spots on the top here, and uh, they're um, quite small. So I'm not going to do anything with them at the moment. I'm just going to cut over them. And with my dark orange, I've done a darkish layer along the edge here, and then I faded it across. I'm going to do the same with each one. And then we're going to add lighter and lighter shades of orange across the mushroom. Although we might do dark on both sides, thinking about it. I think that's going to work better. You could just do it on one side and fade across to the other, but I think this will work better doing dark on both sides. Now with the polychromas, they are designed to be layered, as you may well know. So trying to press really hard here and get a lot of colour down may not be the best option. It's about just gently um, going over and over the same part, but we can... Um, we can layer over each colour over the same bit and then it will build up. This is the orange glaze, which is the next colour I'm going to use, as I say, over the top. And then pull the colour across. So more layers towards the edge. There's a train going by. I don't know if you can hear the horn, it's quite loud don't know how sophisticated my camera microphone is. My son was saying his microphone, he's got quite an expensive microphone for his recording because um, he, there's often background noise when he's recording and he wants to mute it out. So uh, his is so good that if he's typing it doesn't even pick up the key types, the key presses sounds, I don't know. But uh, I'm not too worried. As long as I, you can hear me. I think that's the main thing. There aren't lots of sounds in the background here. He has to record in the main room with everybody around. So uh, he he's really desperate to make himself sound very professional, um, which is interesting. He watches the most, this is the cadmium orange, he watches some of the most um, highly paid, highly popular um, YouTubers and sort of wants to be that good which is a great ambition to have, I think. Um, oh, my telephone's ringing, hold on. Hi, I am back, the telephone rang. I uh, I can't remember where I'm at with my colouring. I'm just gonna sort of go over this. I don't know where I was at. Um, yeah, the telephone rang and uh, I was on the phone for a bit and then I came back to film and my battery ran out on my camera. <laughs> So I've had to wait a good few hours um, before coming back to you. So uh, as I say, I've got no idea what I was talking about or where I was up to with my colouring. But um, anyway, I'm just sort of doing a bit and hoping. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, if we do one more colour for the middle bit and then we can just... This is the... Um, dark chrome yellow. I'll do this in the middle and then I'll go back over each of them I think and uh, try and make sure it's nice and even and blended and that sort of thing. So uh, there we go. Yes I've cooked tea and done the ironing as well. <laughs> so uh, all sorts of things going on since, um, since the last bit of the video. For you it's been no time at all. Okay I'm going to start with the dark one Actually, I'm going to work on each one, one at a time. And uh, this is the um, dark cadmium orange. And I'm just going to get this looking. 
how I'd like it. Although I said I was going to sort of do, this is the orange glaze. Um, although I said I was going to do them all at the same time because it was quicker and a bit easier. I've decided to just concentrate. This is the cadmium orange. And I need to sort of, I'm getting tired now because it's getting towards the sort of end of the day now and the dark chrome yellow so I need to uh, make sure I'm concentrating really so those are all my layers and I just have to decide whether that blend is good enough and the answer is no so I'm going to just redo this bit this is going back to the cadmium orange to just try and get that to look like there isn't a line a blend line that's a bit better I'm going to leave it like that <clears throat> I'm going to work on this one, so start again with the dark cadmium orange. And then just what I'm trying to do is put more layers near the corner and the edge, like that. Layer them up and then do a few less to sort of fade it in. And then you can blend it into your next layer of the orange glaze. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, I did two washes worth of ironing because I had one pile waiting to be ironed that I hadn't ironed and uh, one pile on the area that was dry to do. But I don't normally leave it that long. But because the children are on holiday, this is the cadmium orange, um, they don't need their clothes so urge. I just put my hand in the glitter. Uh, it's not wet. I just wondered what it was. So, ooh. Um, they don't need their clothes sort of you know, if they run out of clothes, I can just run, do the ironing in the morning, you know, and they can just have to sit in their PJs. Well, they don't actually have any PJs, but they can just, um, here's the dark chrome yellow. They can just sit about and wait for me or even wear something creased, you know. And my husband's got lots of clothes, so he's okay for work. So, uh, it's all fine. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay with that one. So move on to this last one. And oops, back with the dark cadmium orange. My pencils are rolling further and further away. <laughs> Naughty little pencils. Here we go. I'm not doing too much of that one. I think it's quite dark. And then the orange glaze. So I was doing that and I was watching a quiz <laughs> while I was ironing. And uh, so that was fun. I do like a quiz. Um, cadmium orange. It just also makes me feel um, a bit clever if I can get some of them right, <laughs> even if it's only the easy ones. I'm naturally very competitive, so uh, and dark chrome yellow. Um, so yeah, it's uh, I find it quite fun. You know, if I beat the contestants on the screen, I'm like, well, yeah, <laughs> doesn't happen that often though. Okay, I'm not going to worry about the. Um, the dots yet. I'm going to do the um, the stem part and we've got basically it's in two parts as you can see and I'm thinking our mushrooms that we did on the very first video we did with a very grey um, almost silvery looking um, stem so I thought if we do these in a more sort of brown tone it might just be a bit different. Um, I'm just having a look at my browns. I'm thinking a grey brown would be good. We could do with some French greys. We don't have those in our polychromos so I'm going to go for the new gar colour and um, just maybe just do a layer across just while I think about what to do. We could always put some greys on top if we think it's going too brown but I think these um, little bits, these are bits, um, these are often white actually but I think it's better to do them in a colour so you can see them. Now with these what I like to do, I actually did the same with the other one, is to sort of emphasise these lines that are here. And it just makes it look a bit more shapely rather than flat, which I think is always nice. It's quite a simple thing to do, just carry the line out to the top and do one on the edge and a little bit under there where there would be shadow like that and then take that one up and that one up this one 
yeah, while I was away, I had an email about the floor for the kitchen. We've got a date for the floor fitting, which is the 26th, I think. I'm just going to check my calendar. Oops, I'm on December on my calendar. That's a bit ambitious. The, no, the 23rd of September to have the, 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 um, the sort of coating put down on the floor. Just looking for a different brown, and then um, the following Monday, I'm going to use the bistro for the stem just to start with. Then the following Monday, it'll be laid because they have to put down some sort of um, what did he call it? A sort of um, stuff on the top. Was it lacquer? Am I thinking is that the right word? I know what lacquer is, but I'm not sure what he said. But anyway, so they've got to put down something first, and that's got to dry. Um, it's a sort of flattening type thing, I think. I'm going to use a grey now. It's getting a little bit too brown for my liking. I'm going to use quite a dark warm grey. This is the warm grey 6. Oh, sorry. When I bash my desk, there's a, a drawer in the desk, which um, can't actually open because of the uh, way the room's arranged, because um, something's overlapping. And the drawer... Um, has a metal piece in it and it rattles when I hit the desk and that's the noise you can hear and it doesn't hurt my arm or anything but it's just rattly. I'm just going to bring that in so that yeah I think that's worked I'll talk you through this one so start on the edges like that and then the shadow under here and then just gently bring that colour in, fading as you go. So not only are we doing less layers, but we're sort of putting a gentler touch on the pencil so we get less colour down. I can do the same on this one. And it's quite tricky to do that. Um, I, I've gone through stages with my colouring. When I first started, I was far too light. Because I wasn't confident, I didn't press at all hard. I was also using... Stedler Norris pencils on um, on printer paper so if I press too hard I go through the paper so I had to be careful but um, I had to then start to adapt to get more layers down press just a little bit harder but not too hard this is dark sepia I'm going to draw in some shadows and uh, yeah so then I ended up starting to get a little bit too hard and I had to sort of draw myself back a bit and, and learn how to go soft again. So it's uh, it's all about um, just fine tuning really and uh, precision work. But it gets there. You just have to um, keep practicing. I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow line along here too because this one is obviously a little bit in front. So it might be casting a bit of a shadow. On the one behind, maybe like that. Yeah. Um, we might have some shadows from the plants actually too, like here. Mm, and maybe this one, just a little bit, because it could be leaning actually right against the uh, mushroom toadstool. Not sure. Okay, if we do the plants next, and then I'm going to have a think about these dots. Um, I haven't got much of a choice of pen in here with me actually. Um, I could use a Posca, you know, um, actually most of my colours are pale, which wouldn't really work. A red Posca might work if you get red dots. Um, but I'm going to, excuse me, do the plants. Um, I want to do them quite dark. I think I'll pick this one. This is the Chrome Oxide Green. I might try and make them a little bit darker at the bottom. And then a bit less towards the tip of each. A little bit like that. I'm not sure whether that's supposed to be one or not, whether it's supposed to be a bit of rock or what, but I'm just going to do them all the same. I think the simplicity is our winner here, actually. really want to draw loads of attention to this bit over anything else. 
Sorry, I'm just concentrating and I'm tired. Right, dots. Um, let me see what I've got. I think I've got a black pen. I might not have it in here. So I've got that one. That'll do nicely, I think. Um, yeah. So I've actually got a black glaze pen, Jedi Roll. Um, it is number 49. So it leaves a shiny um, dot. So I'm going to try that. Okay. I used a lot of this on a picture recently, so I don't know whether there's much ink left. It's not always easy to tell, is it, with a gel pen? I need to hold the page down, it keeps moving. Sometimes um, the gel disappears out of the pen, like the barrel. But look, this barrel looks full. If I hold it up to the light or the window, I can't see through it, so I've got no idea. But it feels like it's running out on me. I'm just going to scrub it on my rough. Oh, it's okay. Ah, uh, there we go. It's My problem is it's reflecting the light, so I can't actually see. <laughs> Which is the whole point of it, of course. Uh. I'm going to do these dots like this. Now you may want to do yours a completely different colour or way. That's completely up to you. I would be quite tempted to do them brown if I had a brown pen, which I don't. I've got a brown felt pen. That might have worked. Might have worked, but it's not in here. And it's a bit tricky for me at minute to uh, knit next door because I've got to open doors. So I've, I'm just checking that's all filled in. I think it is. Because um, I've got to shut the door in here because the children are here. They want me to shut the door so they can talk and they don't have to worry about being heard. So um, it's uh, it's harder for me to nip next door. But uh, anyway. So I'm sort of hoping that well, by the time this video is going out, some of the kitchen work will be done. Um, there's, we, we sort of split it into two phases. The first phase I would have thought would have been done by now, maybe, or at least being started. We're going to have a new boiler. See where well, our kitchen is in two parts, so it's an L shape, so in the one bit of the L there's the sort of sink units and worktops, and then in the other bit of the L, opposite the kitchen bit, is a table and a window, and then on the far end there is this sort of utility area where there is the, the sort of washing machine, dryer, a boiler and all those sorts of things. So um, it uh, means they can do one end and then the other end. And we're also having some work done in our cloakroom and hallway all at the same time. We just added a few jobs onto the list. In fact, I got a few more that I've thought of since but I'm not going to add them in now I think it's I don't want to complicate matters what we'll do is we'll see if the if the job is really good and we like the people we can get them in to quote for the next bit of work we want doing later I think it'll be a bit easier that way and also um, the work I want doing is I want some shelves putting above my colouring desk so I can um, store my books and things more easily. At the moment they're all on the floor and uh, it means moving the desk out, moving my computer and all sorts of things which isn't too complicated but while, when we've got an upside down kitchen it is potentially a little more tricky. Now what I want to do, I want, whoops, ooh, <laughs> I want to use some of these black diamond stickles on here as well on each dot. Um, the lid wasn't fastened properly, which is why I went, ooh. <laughs> now, if I go on here, I'll get a big splodge, and um, I think it'll be too much. So what I'm going to do is use this um, this one to apply it, like I have done for the other things. I've got a bit of the non-black diamond, the normal diamond one on the end of here. It's dried, I think will be okay. So I'm going to put a bit on here, just because I think if I just blob it on, it's going to be quite difficult to control which this will be to first things of it. I don't want blobs that are too big. I think I can get a smaller blob with this. A cocktail stick would be even better. 
but again, it's not in the room. Um, I'm just going to persevere and stick my head nearly into the camera, under the camera, to see what I'm doing. It takes a bit of concentration, it's a bit less talking, I'm quiet whispering so I don't distract myself. <laughs> I'm going to go back over some of those, take some off, so they're not too blobby, being an official word obviously, let's put a little bit more on, it's just sort of easy does it, a little bit at a time. So yes, I've been talking about kitchens for months, to be boring or silly, but uh, it's an exciting thing happening. My son was watching a YouTuber, a live one, it was an old one, um, so it was like, um, you know, it was the download of the live, and he was like calculating how much the YouTuber had made, um, as he does YouTubing too, you see. He's hoping he can start making money from it. And someone who comments on his lives says, Oh, when you're famous, don't forget me. You're so good, you're going to become really big and all this. My son isn't that convinced, but he was like, Look at this guy. He earned £3,000 in in a 10-hour live stream. He said, It's not a bad um, hourly rate, is it? <laughs> I was like, Oh, love. You know. It's like saying, oh, um, look how much David Beckham earned and I can play football down my local club. You know, it's on a Saturday morning with my friends. It takes a lot of time, effort. And um, um, you've got to just attract the right sort of people and that sort of thing. And I said, also, you know, I said to him, you know, be like me. I don't do it for the money money is a bit of a bonus I just get little bits here and there which I can put back in and fun little fun things you know I said you don't want to sort of start focusing on that on making money especially at his age and of course he would love to not have to ever get a job and um, wouldn't we all I'm just going to tip this up because I can't see where I've missed and where I haven't oh I've missed quite a lot okay we're going to do a bit more should we have it in shot? <laughs> so, uh, like, just you know, it's it's lovely. Do do it because you love it, because you enjoy it, which is why I do it. You know, try not to worry. You know, I mean, he's obviously got to find a career and earn something. So, but he's going to be doing his degree in finance and business with the view to becoming a management accountant he could end up earning that much money apparently it's very well paid so I gather I'm not I've never really looked I think it depends if you work in London for the right company at the right time you could probably do very well if you uh, work around here in our area Salaries are not so high, but then nor is living expenses. No. That's why we live here, because the houses were a bit cheaper than some other areas that we considered. But we're lucky because we've got a lovely house, a lovely location. We've paid off our mortgage. We feel so, so fortunate. But obviously, the children are just setting out, so they're in a whole different situation to us. We just feel, you know, lucky. Right, I just remembered something I need to do. Which has nothing to do with this video, but I'm going to write it down. And I'll tell you when I've written it down what it is. Because it might make you giggle. Um, I, um, I have to remember to ask my husband to set the video recorder. And, well, what is it? The TV box thing to record Neighbours because the last ever episode is on 
tomorrow and uh, I haven't watched it for years and years but I want to uh, I want to watch the last ever episode because me and my husband both used to watch it as children by the time we met I'm just going to tip it again to the light and by the time we met I think I've got most of them now I think I'm going to leave it there it is so by the time we met, we'd already stopped watching it, but we both watched early episodes um, before we knew each other, when we were still at school. So we want to uh, just watch the last one, you know, I think it'll be fun. I think we're a bit squiffy. I'm rubbish at getting it straight. I need to set square on, I need some lines. I think I might, I have to see if I can put lines on my camera screen and then I can line things up. I wonder if I can do that. I used to on my old one be able to put a cross hatch on the... Hmm. Anyways, I'm going to go. Um, this is the end of the series, so it's really sad. So I'm going to zoom out, actually, so you can see the whole picture. You'll be able to see my messy desk, potentially, as well. Oh, no. Maybe not. <laughs> Hopefully not. There we go. So, uh, I don't know whether it's better with the light on or off. You can see the sparkle of the stardust. When I turn the light out, oh, we'll, the camera would adjust. Um, it looks a little bit bleached out, doesn't it, without the yellow of the light. Let's put the lamp back on for you. Ooh, that was a bit blinding, wasn't it? It adjusts to the light, it's very clever. And we'll just adjust the lamp as a second setting. There we go. That might be a better light. I think that's a little bit blue. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm going to leave it on that one, but I'm going to say thank you for watching. Um, I hope you had fun with this series. I am feeling like the bugs haven't got any glitter and everything else has. You might be feeling a bit left out and sad. <laughs> but I'm not going to put any on them. Maybe on their legs? No. No, we leave them. Um, I, I was really pleased with them. They're actually my favourite thing, to be honest, on the page. But uh, anyway, that was a fun little series. Um, I've got no idea what I'm going to do after, so it'll be a surprise to me and a surprise to you. But thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope it was fun for you. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, actually. I'm um, just going to sweep away a few bits because I'm being fussy. There we go. And if we take the paper out from behind, we've got a nice clear page. So thank you very much for watching. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and happy colouring. <laughs>